Hey everybody, Roxabox90 here with a spoiler news speculation something video. Basically, we're going to go over a bunch of cool stuff that I found and speculate. Journey into Nick's information. This is not confirmed by the official moderators at MTG Salvation. That does not mean it's not true. It just means that it's not 100% accurate. So we're going to call it speculation and take everything said here with a grain of salt. What does Megadog say? He said the pre-release shouldn't of Journey to Nick should involve something players do alone called Forge a God Slayer. With Forged being in Glory, Intellect, Tyranny, War, Pursuit being the box names at the pre-release. You remember in Born of the Gods we had five box names, one for each color, and each one had a seeded pack which would lean towards a certain color or god combination. Since the next set will have the other five minor gods of guild colors, the Boros, the Simic one, etc. This could very well relate to that, and these names could relate to those gods, potentially. Again, this is speculation. But the more important thing here, besides for the fact that it's kind of cool, you band together to find a god, is that the challenge deck, like in Theros, we had defeat the Hydra. Now we have defeat a god. What makes it interesting here is that they don't say defeat Xenagos, even though that's what I'm expecting from the story. If you remember, Wizards put out a picture for Journey into Nyx, promotional art probably, where it shows Elspeth and most likely Ajani, 99% sure Ajani, facing off against Xenagos. What's interesting here is that they're going to be fighting, most likely, and Wizards, I'm expecting them to do the boring thing and make Xenagos the ultimate arch-villain, which doesn't really make sense, because if you break down what's actually going on in the story-wise, I don't see why Xenagos is such a super-villain. If anything, he's kind of an anti-hero. I mean, he's, he's literally the epitome rise, like, poor guy rising up to become wealthy, and for him, he's goes from being a normal planeswalker satyr guy to becoming a satyr god. And he fills a red-green slot of god that has been empty for a very long time. The satyrs have had no one to represent them, nor have they really cared to. So it's not even like all the red-green creatures on, uh, on Theros are being frustrated with him taking this slot. If anything, they're probably kind of happy. And the only one who's really, really angry with him and wants to deal with him is Heliod. But Heliod is really self-centered, egotistical. Is he going to deal with Xenagos himself? Of course not, because he can't. And that still makes him angry that, you know, the Pantheon's actually filled out. Instead of nine slots, now we have ten. So everything is in balance, and the world is in good shape. And the only one who's really angry about this that seems is Heliod. And he's sending Elspeth to do his dirty work. So if it was me, and I was writing the story, and I wanted to have a cool plot twist, I would put out this art and say, look at it, guys. It's obviously Elspeth Ajani versus Xenagos. But what actually happens is Elspeth's and Johnny come to kill Xenagos, and he goes like, hold up a minute. Do you guys know that Heliod is actually the big bad guy, and he's manipulating you to try to kill me, when, in fact, he's the one who's been screwing up the whole plane the whole time? Which is true, because he represents the leader, the Zeus figure of the gods, and he's actually been screwing everything up the whole time as well. And then this, the two planeswalkers are enlightened and say, you know, that's actually kind of smart, Xenagos. Let's go take down Heliod. And then you go and kill Heliod, and the plane is a lot happier for it. Yeah, I know, it's kind of ridiculous, but that would be the story if I was telling it. I think that would be a really cool plot twist, and that this art is actually spinning it the whole time, and that's why this piece of art doesn't say defeat Xenagos. Uh, not art, this piece of text doesn't say defeat Xenagos. It could just be Megadog is wording it as defeat a god, or Wizards wants to make you think that you're going to be fighting any god. Knowing WotC, I have no expectations. Probably they're just going to make it kill Xenagos or drive him off, but I kind of like Xenagos, and I wish that the story arc I just said, or something like it, was going to actually be going on, because I'm really not a fan of Helio. Let's get to the more news part of the video quickly. We have the deck list and new art for the dual deck Jace vs. Vraska. So we already talked about this before. We already speculated about Jace and Vraska. As I put forth in my last video, I don't like the Jace that much. Vraska looks kind of cool, and if you're looking for ETH, you're going to want to foil. The foils are going to keep rising, because she's an amazing EDH planeswalker, and she's going to continue rising, especially once she leaves standard as a foil, so if you want to grab a foil for your deck and you don't mind this art, go for it. This one's going to be the cheaper one, and if you get the decks anyway, why not? Jason, on the other hand, I think the this will probably be cheaper even than the original regular art, at least while it's in standard, but if you want Jace the Architect of Thought, this whole deck is 20 bucks. so even if he drops down to, let's say, 10 and Vraska down to 5, you're still getting 15 back just from the Planeswalkers, but we also get some other stuff. We got the Body Double, which is a really cool take on it since it's taking from the graveyard. So these masks going on its face is a lot cooler than just having a, a, cl a literal clone effect. This one's like rising from the grave. 
whereas the original art was kind of like a twisting from the grave. So this is very cool. It's a great EDH card. It's basically a five clone of a graveyard creature, which is very powerful. Then we also Remand, yes, with not as cool art, I think, but still, it's Remand, which is a $20, buck, $20 card now, thank you, Modern. This would be nice to bring down the price a little bit, maybe $10, $12, but of course it might also make a lot of collectors or speculators buy out these boxes at $20 pre-order and prevent people from getting them, which would be sad. However, if you do get a box and you're not going to be using the Remand, you may want to recoup some of your money and put it into a card that for more casual play or EDH play instead of Remand, which is, it's okay, but it's definitely not great in the EDH format, and there's no reason to hold such a value card for, um, so it's just going to bring down the value a little bit. Putrid Leech is okay, nothing special. The original art I thought was kind of gross in its uniqueness, Night's Whisper, or whatever. Future Sight, yes, this art we speculated from the Vault 20, and it's nice to see it take its spot here instead on Future Sight. This is a great EDH card. I kind of wish we have a foil. We better get a foil eventually in some way or another, but this card looks gorgeous, and I definitely will be wanting it. The decks themselves, I'm not a good judge of these things because I'm just... I don't know, I'm just not. But in terms of value, these decks are definitely going to match up. My bet would be that the Jace deck will be more consistent and be a control, better as a control deck against a deck that's running, it, yeah, it's running a lot of creatures, but um, Green Black's not exactly, with the way they built this deck, it's not exactly the most aggressive deck ever, which means in the long run, I think the Jace deck will probably hold its own more often than not. So those are our piece of information and speculation today. Let me know what you guys think about the Jace vs. Frasca decks, and if you guys can get them a pre-order, go for it. The Journey Thinks information is speculation, but I'd love to hear what you guys think about it down below in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video, tap that like button, and if you're new to the channel, check in and subscribe. As always, Rocks and Box 90 signing out. I'll see you guys next time.